Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good day everyone. I'm going to talk about the influence of fiscal and monetary policy in the economy. As we know, the uh, short run uh, fluctuation may occur because change or shift in aggregate demand and or aggregate supply curve. We also understand that there will always be adjustment to get back to the long run equilibrium condition. The problem is we don't know how long the adjustment will take place. That is why the suggestion is to adopt certain policy to eradicate the unexpected economic condition. In terms of uh, economic stabilization policy, the two most common policies are monetary and fiscal policies, as I said earlier, and both influence the aggregate demand in the short run. We begin with the monetary policy. Um, last time, when we were talking about the three reasons why the eddy curve slopes downward, one of the effects is the interest rate effect. I mentioned that change in price affects the output through money market. Money market then determines the equilibrium interest rate. Returning to the real sector, the change in interest rate will then affect the aggregate demand through investment. What about our loanable fund market that also determines the interest rate in our past discussions? Uh, well, we're not talking about it here, unfortunately. Our loanable fund market we have discussed so far is within the long run framework. Y is at its natural level in the long run, thus it tends to be unchanged and also unaffected by change in nominal variable like prices. So if you would like to use it again in the short run, there should be some adjustment, most importantly to allow saving change following change in income or Y. Okay, to make it simple, let's just, the, let's just see the money market. The theory we use is called the theory of liquidity preferences from Keynes. And according to this theory, interest rate is determined from the interaction between money supply and money demand. So the point A here. What interest rate? Well, we can use both. With relatively stable expected inflation in the short run, nominal and real interest rate will move in tandem. Money supply curve is drawn as a vertical line since it is determined by the monetary authority, meaning no influence from interest rate. It will shift if the monetary authority changes the money supply with any monetary instruments uh, it has. On the other hand, money demand curve is downward sloping, showing the negative correlation between interest rate and demand for holding money or preference of people for liquidity. It's called the liquidity preference because money is the most liquid asset. And interest rate here is the opportunity cost of holding money. If interest rate is high, the opportunity cost of holding money is high too, so people prefer holding less money. With high interest rate, he or she can get the interest rate uh, return from buying interest-bearing bonds or interest-bearing bank accounts. With the theory in mind, then it's easy to see the interest rate effect when price changes. For instance, here increases from P1 to P2. Look at the money market diagram here. Higher price means more money needed to facilitate the transaction of goods and services. Demand for money then increases and the curve shifts to the right. With fixed money supply, the excess money demand then will increase the equilibrium interest rate. Equilibrium moves from C to D. The resulting higher interest rate from price increase will lower the aggregate demand and the Y, okay, and the Y because of uh, because cost of borrowing is now higher and it lowers the investment. So we can observe here in the aggregate demand diagram, price increase results in lower Y or movement along the aggregate demand curve from point A to point B. Now, how if monetary policy is adopted? Monetary pol expansion policy, increase, policy increases uh, money supply. Higher money supply shifts uh, the MS curve to the right from MS to MS prime. Now, we have excess money supply that leads to the uh, new equilibrium at B at lower equilibrium interest rate and higher quantity of money. 
Again, the change in interest rate is reflected in uh, aggregate demand curve. Lower interest rate will increase AD because investment is now higher. At the same price, P bar, Y increases from Y1 to Y2. Since the source of change is not from price, AD or aggregate output is higher at any given price. It means AD curve shift to the right. The opposite will occur if monetary contraction, for instance, is adopted. Money supply uh, decreases, money supply MS curve shifts to the left, interest rate is now higher, higher interest rate decreases uh, AD at any given price level, AD shift to the left. Uh, monetary policy can also be described either in terms of the money supply or in terms of the interest rate. Expansionary monetary policy can be described either as increasing money supply or as lowering interest rate. Targeting lower, lower interest rate means that the monetary authority conduct whatever open market operations are necessary to ensure the interest rate is lower. For sure, the result of the open market operation is more money supply now available and lower interest rate. Okay, I hope the presentation is clear enough. Thank you for your attention and you can watch again my next video to learn about the influence of fiscal policy and some issues in implementing the stabilization policy. See you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.